Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. We tested torque limiting extensions once before and commented there how from what we saw we need to take another look to see some more and even that high speed camera footage would shine some light onto this issue. Well, we have one of those, that high speed camera now, and, and we've learned enough about how these work and how they don't work that we're removing our previous and still quite popular video to not leave anyone only watching that one with incomplete or incorrect information. What we have here is a classic case of the physics phenomenon, the observer's effect. Essentially, the act of trying to measure something changes that outcome, like checking a car's tire pressure, which in nearly all cases is going to inherently let out some of that tire pressure. And we'll show you how in our case coming up as well. To investigate this theory of what might be going on and illustrate it, we have some rather custom looking torque sticks for you today. And to understand why these are fabbed together, it's perhaps a good idea to understand the purpose of torque limiting extensions. What is that purpose? To limit torque from your impact gun, usually for the sake of quickly installing wheel lug nuts. Essentially on this end, you might have 1000 foot pounds worth of impact wrench, but on this end, you have a lug nut that you shouldn't be tightening much over, let's say 100 foot pounds. So you use a 100 foot pound torque stick to bring it into that ballpark without damaging anything with full beans to put the vehicle back on the ground, then finish with a torque wrench. These only work with impact wrenches, linear increasing torque like when applied with a torque wrench won't utilize this limiting design in any capacity and why is that? Well these range in torque ratings via small to big diameters on the length of the extension which act as a torsion bar. Impact blows are delivered less and less efficiently down the extension length the smaller the extension is. In simple terms imagine a person is hanging from a rope. If you turn that rope gradually with your own hands like you would be with a wrench, that person will start to spin at the end. But if you have a plate sort of like attached to the side of that rope and you hit it with a hammer to try to turn that rope, it would sort of just spring back at you in between blows and not really do much. So to help illustrate how, when, or if that torsional movement is in full effect, we have a couple of customizations here. One is a tube style, a steel tube split down the center and welded only at the ends to the torque limiting extension. Then that tube is cut in two with a line added here in the middle to perhaps demonstrate the two independent ends in impacting motion with movement of the line at high speed. And then finally, this rod design made for the same purpose, complete with 3D printed standoffs made by our friend Logan. First with a standard torque stick that's unabused. This is on our usual dyno. Now you don't need high speed to see that socket slow, but continue to see progress. But here it is at 1000 frames per second. Seems to be doing less work as you impact more, but still certainly some work. Notice how the two ends of the stick shown here with the line work mostly in unison not a huge separation at the line with each impact. Some split of the line is demonstrating a reduction in impact transfer, but it's still progressing that socket with each additional blow. Let's instead move away from our traditional torque dyno and just look at some welded in place F350 studs and lug nuts. This will also indicate to us if our custom welded on sticks are working differently than a new one. In our past episode on these, we showed how there's almost nothing between brands of these even if you purchase Snap-on. And here's the custom stick now. So the markings on the nut line up here even with additional impacting. They seem to be both working the same. And more interestingly to us, that the nut stops its progress rather obviously even to the naked eye. And here's why in 2000 frames per second at high speed, Early on in impacting before that torque stick rating, the lines stay pretty close together, transmitting those impacting blows. But once it's sort of done, you can start to see that line split up more, one end of the extension twisting and the other not receiving that twist translated down the extension, or at least not very much. Here's that demonstrated with the rod standoffs design. Less precise this representation it seems, but you can see how the closer end sweep of the rod is much more pronounced than its friend across the way. And this 130 foot pound stick did progress further than the 100 sticks, which makes sense. 
So somehow us measuring these things with rams and hoses full of hydraulic fluid, which shouldn't be compressing, but no doubt did play a role in performing differently than on a solid steel lug nut and stud interface. This hydraulic bolt tension conversion is the oldest industry standard for measuring impact wrench power going back 60 plus years. And it does well to display that we feel, but for some reason when it comes down to a design made to limit torque and introduce torsional deformation as a goal, yeah, maybe not so great. One thing we noticed with both measurement types last time when we're testing these was that the cordless impacts we used are pretty hopeless for this sort of tool. On the dyno and with lug nuts, this cordless high torque piles on torque either way, and we theorized this was from impacts per minute. So let's take a look. Back to the 100 foot pound custom tube stick now. Besides the obvious that it's getting hit faster now, notice that the line halves stick together much more. It's behaving sort of like a rigid body now. As that close end is hit, so does the far end transmit that hit. And notice too how the markings are moving past the 100 foot pound stick. With our custom rod design, it does become even a bit more useless. The cordless impact actually causes the close end rod to bend permanently as shown here. Not 100% on the relevance there, but certainly a difference between the behavior we saw with the air impact on the same design. Let us know why you think that's happening. So you might be thinking, well, yeah, that Mako high torque, it's a beast though, it's just powerful. Well, silly me, I forgot to mention that the cordless footage we're showing here is with an impact driver. Less than one quarter of the torque of an 1894 air gun we're using, and yet it over torqued this lug nut using the same torque sticks by quite a margin. Those impacts per minute definitely making a difference. About the same as a 150 foot pound torque stick as we see here, which we also checked with the torque wrench to confirm. So yeah, cordless does not work so hot with torque sticks. Once you start hitting that plate on either side of the rope two times more often in our example, you can introduce enough torsional preload or bind so that there's not enough time for that spring back to work effectively and limit that torque. But otherwise, they do seem to work better than at least we understood. No doubt many of you already knew this sort of thing just seeing it in person. This in no way means they are a replacement for a torque wrench, which you should also be using because those are calibrated, and it very much depends on the health of the lug nut and stud being used. A poor condition or stretched stud will not fight adequately enough to create this sort of torque difference from one end to the other end of the stick and likely get too tight. But to quickly zip some tires onto a car that's in the air without damaging anything, they at least work better than many of us here thought, just perhaps can't measure them as precisely as we would have liked about as much as you can in a shop with a paint marker, so in this case your results are at least as valid as any of ours. We just happen to be able to show it in some slow motion. Thanks for watching.